Obviously, very pleasing to receive it personally, but uh, I think more significantly, it, it's a recognition that uh, trade union rights are, are human rights, and uh, I'm very pleased that Liberty have, have recognised that, and I hope that that means that the unions and organisations like Liberty can work closer together to protect all our human rights. How difficult is it to, to represent trade unions when, when the law particularly has big corporate interests and things? How difficult is it for you to sort of stand up for the, the little person? Uh, I don't think it's particularly difficult. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to represent unions and, and workers, but when one thinks about the burdens for and the risks of uh, lawyers representing unions in places like Colombia and so on, I mean, it's child's play here, you're not going to get shot for it, so it's, uh, no, it, it, it's not problematic. And then the forces are very great and the, the uh, legislation is obviously uh, angled against trade unions in a very big way, but, uh, you know, we deal with that. Do you feel that you're banging your head against a brick wall sometimes because of the, the uh, restrictions of the legislation? I suppose in litigation, uh, yes, you, you often are. There's, you're often in a position where you, you have to advise a trade union that it's hopeless to uh, proceed further down this course legally. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the state of uh, the world in a, a global economy. The attacks on trade unions and workers' rights on the legal, from the legal point of view is increasing all the time. I mean, the effect of the current crisis and the austerity measures and the, what's happened in the EU and so forth will mean that there'll be a really reinvigorated attack now on trade unions and workers' uh, rights. Okay, and are you ready for that attack? Or what are you going to do to try and repel it? Well, it's, it's not the, the lawyers that ever lead these struggles. It's, it's the trade unions that, that lead the struggles. And all we can do is, as lawyers is to uh, of offer those legal avenues which do present themselves uh, and to uh, advise. But, of course, we've got one important weapon in the legal armoury that could be of use to trade unions, and that is going back to where we started the conversation, that trade union rights are human rights, and they are protected by international treaties. And that gives a legitimacy to uh, the position of trade unions in defending uh, workers. It's so... I, I, I think th that's what we can do for trade unions, to give them the legal arguments, the legitimate arguments, to say this is n we're not here representing a sectional uh, party political or uh, economic uh, group alone. We are doing all those things. We're also demanding what are recognised internationally as fundamental human rights. The right to collective bargaining, the right to strike, the right to organise and the right to trade union autonomy. Okay. You're talking about strikes. It's very difficult to strike in, in this country now with all the, the rules surrounding the ballots. Um, how do you think a, 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 a sort of way around that? Uh, it is very difficult to strike. There's all sorts of uh, obstacles. From a legal point of view, we, uh, we won a, a very important case in the Court of Appeal in uh, March of uh, 2011, uh, RMT and ASLEF jointly, which uh, has at least eased the burdens, although it hasn't resolved them and it hasn't dealt with a really fundamental obstructions like the complete ban on all forms of sympathetic industrial uh, action. We're addressing that legally by taking cases to the European uh, Court of Human Rights, but ultimately this is a, a, a political and industrial battle uh, that will have to be won to re-establish or to establish in this country the rights that are recognised around the world. It's difficult now with, with ballots because employers are beginning to challenge them, but what's your response to that? But, uh, since the requirement of ballots came in, employers have been challenging ballots. So no, nothing has changed in that way. Uh, it was suggested earlier in 2011 that there'd been a spate of attacks. Uh, I, I don't recognise that at all. It's been an endless stream of employers' litigation. Whenever there's industrial action, the employers and their lawyers will crawl all over the papers to see whether there's room to seek an, an injunction. Uh, and either 
according to the law, the unions have got it right or they haven't. Right. OK, um, just look, look, look back on your career now. Um, obviously, having won that award, what are the, sort of the highlights for you? What are the cases that you'll remember most? Uh, that's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, representing the National Union of Mine Workers in all, this, in all the civil cases that were brought against them during the miners' strike was probably uh, the most memorable part of my professional life. I spent 18 months doing nothing but miners' cases. Um, I think the two successes in the European Court of Human Rights in Wilson and Palmer uh, and the UK and in Aslef in the UK which is established the rights not to be discriminated against for trade union membership and the right of trade unions to decide who they were going to admit to membership are probably the two most important cases I've ever done. Okay, how does it feel personally to, to be involved in that and in, involved in, in achieving something important for the movement? Uh, well, of course, it's very exhilarating, but one recognises immediately that the forces that create uh, a legal victory uh, are not uh, exclusively those of the advocate. They're, they're the forces that operate outside to create a situation where the judiciary or the courts decide in a particular way. It's very, very important to... to for lawyers to have the humility to understand that these battles are actually won by the organised working class through trade unions. They're not won by advocates. So whilst it's a great honour and a privilege to represent trade unions, I've got a very clear idea of just the, what the limits of utility are for people in my position.